take some journeys tonight. I believe tonight is going to be a bit of a smorgasbord. I think that I'm going to open some doors tonight. We might walk through some, but others I'm just going to open and you can peek in. Amen? But what I need for you to do, I just need you to be open. I need you to take off your regular mind, your regular head. I just, come on, everybody, by act of faith. And take, it, take it up like this, take it over, and put it aside. Because <laughs> we're going to be open to some things. And I have a dual mission tonight. One is to just destroy the lies that the enemy has told women. Absolutely destroy them. Really just get rid of, rid of some negative beliefs about ourselves that have governed our lives in wrong directions. Number two is simply just to love the skin you're in. It's important that we just love the skin we're in. Come on. No matter what we look like, no matter how short our hair is, how long our hair is, how big we are, how small we are, because guess what? After all the wigs, the weeds, and makeup, I like it all. I love the wigs. And so we're going to start tonight a little different. In Philemon chapter, I believe it's one verse. Our faith will become effective by acknowledging every good thing in us. He said your faith will work when you acknowledge the good things in you. And sometimes it's hard to acknowledge the good things in you because you might think it's being a little proud, a little stuck up. You think you all that. Well, I want to tell you tonight, you are all that. And by not acknowledging the good things in you, you're actually depreciating the godliness on the inside of you because you are who you are by the grace of God. And you have to acknowledge who God made you. And so I want to start off just acknowledging the good things in us. And so I want you to choose two things. Now understand we women, and we like to talk. So I'm going to give you one minute. Look at your neighbor and say 60 seconds. 60 seconds. I'm going to give you 60 seconds of my time, okay? And I want you to look at your neighbor, and I want you to acknowledge two things about yourself. One, since it goes on the outside, because we can talk all day, we kind of over or undervalue what we're not. So we can talk all day, I don't like my hips, I don't like these arms, but we never acknowledge what we do like. We were made in God's image and in God's likeness. And I want you to acknowledge something about yourself you like, and then I want you to acknowledge something about your character. Something that you like about yourself. Now you got 60 seconds. Choose a partner. Ready, go. Ooh. All right, you got about 10 seconds, seven, six, five, three, two, one. All right, now how did that make you feel? How many people would say it was a little awkward? It was a little awkward. How many people say I ain't had no problem? <laughs> Who would say I ain't had no problem acknowledging? <laughs> <laughs> that is something that we should constantly and consistently do, acknowledging the good things in us, evaluating what God has done for us and what God has done in us. Amen? And so tonight, I want to I wanna talk to you about some women. I believe God has a special love for women. I believe we can learn a lot from women, the women in the Word of God, and I don't want you to think I'm strange, but I've talked to the women in the Bible. I do. I ask them all kinds of questions. And I've been studying women since I was about 16, trying to figure out 
who I was. And so I want to talk about some women tonight. I want you just to be open and listening because I believe some women are going to talk to you tonight. And I believe we got to start at the beginning. I think we got to go back to Eden. Talk to my girl Eve. She's my girl because most women's means we tear Eve up, don't we? That bird Eve, it wasn't for her, you know. They talk about that time of the month. We talk about child marriage, all that. You, you blame it all on Eve. But tonight, I want to give Eve an opportunity to speak. Can we do that? And so she said some things to me that I'm going to say to you tonight. I'm not crazy. Don't look at me that way. I told you to be open. But she said some things to me in Genesis chapter 3. You all remember the story when she was in the garden. And here, Eve's character, Eve was set up. Adam and Eve were set up. Come on, she had a man that had a job. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> working man. God gave her a working man from the beginning. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> she, she had a man. I mean, come on, she had, she had nothing to compare herself to. She had no one, no other woman to compare herself to. She was the perfect woman, the first woman, and God told her who she was. And so she didn't have no real housewives and no reality TV. She didn't have anything. She didn't say, oh, my breast too small, my butt too big. She didn't have any of that. She was secure and whole. That ain't too much for you. Like, okay. She was secure in the hole, just the way she was. And so here she is in the garden, enjoying this wonderful paradise that God had created for her. And here comes this serpent, this snake to talk to her. Now, I asked Eve a couple of questions, and I'm going to let you know what I asked her. My first question to Eve was, Eve, why did you talk to a snake? <laughs> See, because you, you know, you want to ask yourself that sometimes. Why did I stop and talk to that snake? You know, it changed my life. I should have <laughs> never talked to that snake. And so I asked Eve, girl, why are you talking to that snake? Why did you waste your time talking to a snake? Now, let me tell you what Eve said to me. You know, if you do any kind of study on Genesis chapter 3 and look at it in the commentaries, it says that Satan was like a beautiful butterfly, actually a huge creature with wings. And it said he flew in from the east side of Eden. And so it wasn't like he just kind of like, you know, slurred up to her and started talking to her. It said, no, he came from the sky looking like it could have been something from heaven. He was just beautiful. So she said, you know what, Portia? I looked up and said, wow. Like we do a lot of times. We sometimes mistake things as God and God. And so here, this thing comes out of the east side of heaven, and she's overwhelmed. I got to talk to this one. How you doing? You know, so she began to entertain a conversation that she should have never entertained but you have to understand the one number one objective of satan because he's had a beef with us since the beginning i'm gonna let you know you a bad girl you ain't got to put up with that devil but from the beginning his job is to deceive women and so that's why he came that way to begin to talk to eve and i said okay eve i understand she said thank you you know <laughs> That's what happened. And I began to have this conversation with them. I said, well, Eve, where, where was Adam? You know, and everybody got their own uh, interpretations. I'm sure Pastor Steve has his interpretation of where Adam was. We all do. And, you know, she didn't ever answer that question. But what she did say, I said, okay, Eve, well, well why did he talk to you? And see, one thing you have to understand that we as women, you know, God took a minute to build us. You know, he made a man, but he formed and built a woman. You know he had to put him to sleep, you understand. Take some time to do all of this. It's so important to God. And so I said, well, why? Did he come to the woman? You have to understand the way God created you. You have to understand the anatomy of a woman. He created us as creatures. We are receivers. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm a receiver. I'm a receiver. 
And then most times or oftentimes or 90% of the time, 99.999% of the time, that's good news. But see, the enemy understood that God created us receivers as the woman. Even our, our physical body, our sexual organ is open. Got yeah. such education today. He created us open. He created us um, receivers. The way we were made was to receive downloads and information and carry them out. Come on, we are the help. Meaning anything our man of God wants us to do, he may be the visionary because, listen, God created a man closed. You understand? Okay. (laughs) Closed. We're open. Okay. So he created... This is very important. It really is. Because what he put on the inside of a man is his heart and his visions. And man not, might not always know how to carry something out. But come on, when he put him with a woman, all you got to do is speak that thing. I'll receive it and run with it. Women tend to be the legs or the feet to a vision. Yeah. And so created on the inside of us is a desire to get it done, to help. I, I will give you an illustration of that if you can, if y'all all right. But <laughs> it's almost like, you know, especially that, that's why God created the act of marriage, one of the reasons for two to become one. That, that when the act of marriage, meaning sex, that when you come together with your mate, for the married women here, that everything God put in that man's heart will be released into you and we can become. And so one thing about that act of marriage, the man releases strength. That's why he always tied and want to go to sleep afterwards. <laughs> and the woman receives something. And so that's why after the act of marriage, sometimes the woman get up and ready to wash the dishes, do the homework, um, <laughs> write down the vision for the household. Come on, baby, what business is we going to start tomorrow? We ready. And he sleep. <laughs> 